Okay, here are 5 essential warping tips in Ableton Live that work on the latest version Live 11 all the way back to Ableton Live 9. And the first one will be about which warping mode to use when. But I only use 3 of those modes and let's see which they are. So it's kind of obvious, but for drums, I use the beast mode as it preserves the transients of the drums and percussion material. For melodic material, 99% of the time I use the complex mode, as this gives us very natural sounding pitch shifting with a very good quality and not too high CPU usage. It's very much recommended for complex materials, like stuff with a lot of instruments in it, like whole tracks but I actually use it for single instruments as well. It can sound pretty good on vocals. You the only wanna save me. You the only wanna save me. Provided you don't mind this chipmunk effect. You the only wanna save me. When you pitch it up or changing the female voice to a sort of a male voice. You the only wanna save me. When you pitch it down. But here's where complex Pro comes along. So when you choose Complex Pro and you transpose it, let's say, five semitones. Again, let's hear the vocal in its original state. You the only wanna save me. Pitching it up. You the only wanna save me. As you can hear, it doesn't really sound that chip monkey. It kind of retains the timbre of the voice and it sounds more like the singer actually sang it a bit higher and not like it's transposed digitally. So it's all about this formant setting, as formants are the frequencies that are present in our voice or in any instrument, regardless of which pitch we are playing. So it retains the timbre of the voice. If we decrease the formant value... You, the only wanna save me. You, the only wanna save You, the only wanna save me. You can hear that at zero, it goes back to the chipmunk effect, similar to what we had in the complex mode. And I will do a separate video explaining all the modes in detail, but to summarize this tip, I only use beats for drums, complex for pretty much any tonal material, and complex pro when I want to retain the timbre and the tonal quality of an instrument or a vocal. Second tip, there are two things you need to find out in order to synchronize any audio material. First thing would be the actual BPM of the audio material, and the second thing would be the first beat of the musical phrase. For example, looking at this vocal sample, we can see that Ableton has detected 99.20 BPM, which is definitely not the right value, as we can see it is 124 and Ableton sometimes gets it wrong, that's why the automatic warping doesn't always work, and so as a result, this vocal is not synchronized. You bring me joy, baby don't you go, don't go nowhere. What do we need to do? First of all, enter the correct BPM in this section here. This is the segment BPM, so this means that this is the BPM of the section between this warp marker and the next warp marker. So if we see it's wrong, we can manually type 124. You bring me joy. And we can hear it's still not perfectly synchronized. We need to find the first beat and that is the word joy. Right click here, set 1.1 here. This is the important command that you need to remember. So finding the first beat, finding the BPM and the vocal is now in sync. Joy, baby, don't you go, don't go nowhere. I have a more detailed video about synchronizing audio material with uh, the example of showing how to do it with whole songs. I will link it down in the description of the video. And now on to tip number three. And that would be how to move notes around with the warp markers, but preventing them from messing up the timing of the whole audio clip and moving everything with the warp marker. Let's see how it's done. And this one is incredibly quick and easy, so if we move this marker, we can see that it moves the whole audio clip and changes the timing of all the notes inside the clip. So the way to make sure we're only moving this one is to create warp markers around it. So every time we see this pseudo warp marker, this gray thing, we create a warp marker and now we can only move this one. But it gets even better because we don't really need to do it 
manually by creating warp markers by clicking around. We can just hold Command on Mac and it is Control on Windows. And so as you can see, while I'm holding Command, I can actually move only this one node and it automatically creates warp markers around it to anchor the audio clip and make sure we're not messing up the timing of the other regions of the audio clip. It is a great time saver. Oh, and a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you like it, comment and subscribe to the channel. And we're back to the beats warping mode for tip number four. And we can use the decay parameter of the beats warping mode to make our drums shorter, snappier or use the looping mode for some creative effects. Let me show you how to do it. So the beats warping mode loops short regions of the tail of your drum hits to fill the gaps when, for example, you're making the loop play slower than it is without changing the pitch. So, for example, we're at 92 now. If we play it at 70, or even 50, You can hear this reversing and looping sound and this is this setting here. This is set at looping forwards and backwards to fill the gaps. If we change it to moving only forwards, we hear more of a stuttering sound. And this is more pronounced when we pitch it up because there are bigger gaps to fill when we pitch it up. And this setting, there is no looping and filling the gaps involved. And we have this decay parameter here, which is set at what 100. So if we turn it down, we can shorten the actual drum hits that are in our drum loop. Tip number five, if an audio clip is warped, we can change its length right in the timeline without going into the detailed clip settings. How it works? Well, we put our cursor at the end of the clip and we hold the shift button and we see this tiny arrow appearing. So while we hold shift, we can make the loop longer and this makes it play slower. And just to reiterate the point from tip number two, you can see that the segment BPM now is shown as 230. So Ableton assumes that it's 230 and it stretches it accordingly. But this is very useful to change the length of your audio clips right on the timeline. It only works when they're warped. It doesn't work with unwarped clips. And if we click this icon here, we can go to the envelopes section where again, these envelopes only work for warped clips and you have really cool creative applications of the clip envelopes. You can check them out in this video that I will display on the screen right now. And this one is over. See you in the next one.